on Police 107. We come across a couple of drunks who shouldn't have been on the road. No, it's here, it's his blow again. Two 11 year olds become repeat offenders. Okay. How old are you? 11. Oh, How old? Eleven. I three, not Eleven. I'm back, he's too small. A car drives past that should be at the wreckers. Hey. And a fight breaks out at a service station. What did you get a wheel brace out for? Go on. You got a wheel brace out. Q23 with two up and put a seven with Delta. Roger, thank you, Q23. Constables Andrew Osborne and Debbie Ferguson are responding to a call to an incident in central Hamilton. A blue, white, orange backpack. Five of them. Copy, where were they saying last? Dog handler Constable Ray O'Donnell has caught some kids breaking into an empty building and they're far too young to be out at this time of night. Can you look after those two? Yeah. How old are you? Oh, How old? Eleven. This isn't the first time that police have come across the two youngsters. Jack the boy already knows the routine. Right. Have you um, have you ever given the police your fingerprints before? Yeah. You have. How long ago? Not so long ago. And Katie the girl had been picked up on the previous night. The thing is, we're going to take you home, and if I see you out again tonight, what am I going to do? Where are you meant to be Pardon? staying tonight? Oh, is that my mates? Oh, my no. I mean, hey, we took you home last night because you guys were involved in a fight and then we catch you tonight in this building. It's not looking good, eh? And you haven't been in trouble with us before. Get you in trouble twice in 48 hours. We're going to take you back to the station, Come OK? On. Then we'll go and get one eater and we'll take you home. Jack and Katie were referred to Youth Aid. And Andrew Osborne heads back out onto the road with Constable Dale Smith. And it isn't long before they're in action. Well, thanks. For any sort of bail conditions as they well, come up so. behind a car registered to a person who police want to interview. Uh, Roger, uh, showing uh, Masters Hamilton PRN forbidden to drive, active criminal. <laughs> but the man police are looking for isn't driving the car. As Andrew Osborne talks to one of the passengers, a car comes bunny hopping out of the night. Have you got some ID on and you? And its driver can't bring it to a stop. Hey. Whoa, they were just asking for that. Sit in a sec. Police turn seven. Now, while it may seem strange that anybody would drive their vehicle through a group of flashlight waving police, there was an even bigger surprise to come. Around the corner, you're just getting around the corner. Okay. I signal for you to stop. You almost hit me in the road. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, no. Nah. Just... No, that's why you hit my torch when I stuck it out to you. Oh, sorry. Hey, you couldn't even stop the car, could you? No. I... That's because, like, it's just stuff, and that's why... We so what were you driving it for? Just taking around the corner. Which corner? Just that corner. We're just going to put it here, right beside you. Why were you going to put it here? For use. Because, like, it's got Boat? no... Police, here. Ron's claim so that he's trying to tonight? give the car to police has got everybody stumped. Are you understanding any of this? <laughs> you are giving us a car. Yeah. We will, like, it's got no warrant for reg and it's got the number plates have been just stolen off it. And Whose vehicle is it? My step, my brother in law. You were trying to give us your brother in law's car? Yeah. Well, to make matters worse, Ron hasn't even got a full license. Oh, a little license, yeah, as well. Yeah, well, that's why I was only bringing around the corner. Just came from town, walked down. How the car get to that street? Oh, you drove it. You drove it, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't personally drive it. How'd you get the keys then? Because oh, I had the keys all along, but I wasn't driving. So who owns the car? My brother. How come it has got plates on? It's me. Oh, just because it's like. Piece of shit. And you guys decided to drive the so-called piece of shit into town? Yeah, well, like, 
I wasn't driving it until well, I just got in there. A girl was driving it. The girl is a new character in the story, but she isn't going to make much difference. This is going to cost Ron a lot of money. Um, I'm going to have to send you your tickets in the mail. All right. How much do you reckon you need? It's $400 yeah. for a learner driver and a company. Yeah. It's um, $200 for no registration and $200 for no warrant. So that's it. That's it's $800 all up. Yeah, for the um, distributor kick off or something, eh? One of the leads off or something? They don't take it right off. Eh? All of them just, just don't take you pull off the end too. With the car disabled, it is time for Ron and John to face the short walk home. Just stop behind that vehicle, please. Constable Stu McIntyre is part of a booze bus operation in Hamilton. Say your name and address, please. As cars queue to go through the checkpoint, Stu spots a car doing a U-turn and parking on the other side of the road. Just say your name and address, please. Got a license on you? No. Okay. Do you have a license? No. What's it? Have you been told you're not allowed to drive? Yeah. So you know it's going to happen, eh? Jake's already been disqualified from driving, right. and he stands to lose his girlfriend's car. Well, how's your missus going to feel when you get her car impounded? <laughs> nah. You're driving, weren't you? Yep. That's what I thought. But that's not the end of Jake's problems. When he empties his pockets, he pulls out a bag of cannabis. Jake was fined for possession of cannabis, and his girlfriend's car was impounded for 28 days. Shortly afterwards, a noise from down the road attracts Stu McIntyre's attention. A man's been badly beaten up. To you guys, just wait over there. I'll have a talk to him and then we'll come talk to you guys, eh? What's happened, mate? I don't know. He can't remember. Okay. I thought the guys take off down there as a group of them. Okay. It's about half a dozen at least. Yeah. yeah. Did you actually there. see it happening or? Um, no, not quite. Sort of just saw the after when they all stood up and just started taking off down there. About half a dozen guys. Alright. While Stu tries to work out what's been going on, the victim decides to leave. Sorry, sir. Hey, what, what's your name? There's an ambulance coming to check you out. You've got quite bad damage in the two. I suggest you just sit down here, eh? All right. There's an ambulance coming, and you've got quite bad damage in your mouth, all right? Do you remember anything that happened at all? OK. Basically, For some reason, the man doesn't want to talk about what's happened. And with no witnesses, there's not much Stu can do. This gentleman down here, obviously with cloth over, he doesn't want to talk to me, so I'll go. Right on. No charges were laid from this incident, but over in Tauranga, police are gathering to deal with another fight. What's going on? Um, not too much at the moment, either. Constables Glenn Wilson and Aaron Kelleher are on patrol when they come across a group of police trying to deal with a number of noisy people. Oh, oh. A couple of guys have been urinating in a service station forecourt and a fight's broken out. There was nothing going on? Nothing, nothing going on, that's not what we heard. What? No, that's what, what did you eat? What did you eat? Oh, don't don't car car away, yeah. Yeah. One car's already left the scene and the people who are still there are claiming that they're the ones who have been attacked. Hey, you're not going to smoke in here, eh? You're not going to smoke in the petrol station, eh? Not a good idea. What did you get a wheel brace out for? Oh, you got a wheel brace out? Yeah. Why? Did you follow scene in this? You didn't see it? Yeah. There are a few witnesses to the fight, but the service station security camera has recorded the whole thing. Young Marigold was over here with his wife and his kids, and these guys were just pissing all over our ground. 
and the young Mary guy just yelled out something like, hey guys, you know, you know, just go to the toilet or something. And they were just into him, eh? Just into him. The guy with the dreads went back to the boot twice to get the jack out. One of the Mary females tried hiding the jack. And they're jack. both in the same car? Yep, they were all in the same car, yep. They move the car forwards, then she's trying to stop. He's over here right now, he's dealing to the young Mary guy behind yep. the boot. You can see there the yep. punch is thrown. Yep. You can see the guy coming on the boot yep. kicker. Yeah, he comes along, gives him a big hit. The Sweet. guy with the dreads we saw take to the guy yep. with a bottle and a jack, oh, okay. car jack. Sweet as mate, that's cool. Yeah. Just up. Do you want can, you, yeah, can you yep. secure it or? Yeah, I'll secure it, I'll just pull it out. Yep. Sweet as mate, I'll come back in a second, eh? Okay. The security footage confirms that they've got the right men, although Glenn can't tell what happened to the person they were fighting with. Thing goes well. Both um, give it lane. It's got a big time. Yeah, I'll, I'll send tape. Both of them are giving them hiding. Both of them are hiding. You the best me. Yeah. Uh, don't look like it to me, mate. No, you have to jump in the no, first no, camera. No, 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 no. Jump in the first camera. No. no. Terence was charged with fighting in a public place. When he went to court, he was convicted and discharged with no penalty. Anthony was charged and later convicted for possession of an offensive weapon. He was sentenced to 60 hours community work. Well, fun and games, eh? Both of them got to sober up at the station before going home. No laser station wagon to We're out on patrol in Hamilton with Constable Grant Cooper when a call comes in about a driver who's behaving very erratically. What do you want to use the sniffer? The sniffer that Grant's brought seems hardly necessary. The driver can barely stand. Keep line, that's the one. Keep going. Keep going. A big breath, one big breath. You can do it. Come on. As police offer some physical support, the man finally gets his mouth around the tube. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And the result comes as no surprise. You see how that says fail general? Yeah. That indicates to me that you might be over the limit, OK? Yeah. So because of that, I now require you to accompany me to the Hamilton Police Station yep. or any other such place yep. for the purpose of an evidential breath test, blood yep. test or both. Right. Okay? No, we'll have to go straight there now, okay? The lawyer would wake the next day with a major hangover, but his biggest headache would come when he pleaded guilty to having drunk three and a half times the legal limit for drinking and driving. He was disqualified indefinitely, fined $2,000, had his car confiscated, and was placed under nine months supervision with the warning that if he gets caught again, he'll go to prison. The lawyer later claimed that he only drove because he was too drunk to walk. How are you going, buddy? All right? Up the road near Huntley, You're Constable right? Raymond yeah. Sunkel has it. just caught up with another driver who's been speeding. Tony. Did you peak a bit soon with your, with your speed, did you? Oh, we'll just hang on, I'll just shut that door for you. You don't want you to lose your door? Yeah, no, And plus, I don't want you to lose it there? Yeah. Where are you off to? Into town? Yeah. As Dayton, the driver, gives his details, Ray Sunkel smells He's alcohol on his breath. Yeah. Just do a breath test too, eh? Just can, can you count from one to ten for me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold well on. Mr. Farrell, how much have you had to drink tonight? I've had about three bottles. About three bottles? Yeah. Right. Because that's a fail, yeah. of uh, reason to believe you've been drinking alcohol, yeah, you're required and you don't go breast screening test without delay. Oh. Alright. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Alright. And Lewis? Okay, that's a fail general. Yeah, Alright. What that means is you've had um, too much to drink and I now require you to accompany me to the Huntley Police Station. Either such place for the purpose of an evidential breath test, blood test, or both. That right. still leaves the problem of Dayton's friends and the car. Yep, I said please. Jump on the back seat first, would you? One of the friends thinks he's sober enough to drive and asks for a breath test. Just uh, make good seal and just blow into that. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yep. That's the fail youth, which means you. How old are you? Yeah, you'll be sweet ass to drive, right? 
With everything taken care of, it's time to get Dayton back to Huntley Station. Yeah, you need to smoke up. Dude, what a dude, eh? What a crack up there, man. We're just coming up. Scandalous, by the way, this guy. Scandalous, mate. Scandalous. Oh, man. Come with me. Oh, check this guy out. <laughs> and though a sense of humour is holding, a bad night is going to get much worse. And don't stop blowing until that tone stops, and I'll tell you when, alright? Okay, big breath. Ready? Keep going. That's the one. Keep going. Blowing 900 in the evidential breath test, Dayton knows he's in serious trouble. This has happened to him before. Um, this will be his third EBA, which will mean it's a little bit harsh to sentence, so he was quite right in telling us that. With a third drink driving conviction, Dayton's facing a number of possible penalties, including losing his car. Trouble is, it belongs to his dad. Just about the blood. Nah, mate, that's my old man's car. Oh, I grabbed it, mate. Yeah. No shit, there. Does he know you've got your car? Yeah, man, he's up in Aussie and shit. So he doesn't really know that you've got his car? <laughs> nah, he knows I've got his car. He just doesn't know that I was going out on it tonight. <laughs> so, would you be in trouble for driving it? Yeah, pretty much, man. You probably would. So it gets even worse for you. Well, what I'm going to do is put me in jail, man. Nah. I won't go jail, man. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write you out some summonses, all right? To go to court in Huntley. And uh, then you're going to have to go there ah, on a charge of uh, driving with excess breath alcohol. And this will be your third, third or subsequent, eh? You know that, eh? Because you had it twice before. When Dayton pleaded guilty, so, ooh, he did lose his father's car. He was also disqualified from driving for 18 months and had to do six months periodic detention. Right, yep, yep. Alright. I've just got the call. We have about 100 people on the road. Constable Matt Knowlesley and Rachel Dollegy are driving the support vehicle for the South Auckland Team Policing Unit. HIQ, um, we'll get to you a little soon if you want to meet us somewhere. We're just going to go on the main drag now. Um, that must be true. They've just been called to a teenage party that's got out of control in Howick. Park parties normally have a lot of teenagers and they have access to vehicles, so um, more often than not they tend to um, get in their vehicles and disperse upon arrival of police, but um, we'll see what we get when we get in. Yes. Police have been called in by the worried homeowner. OK. What we've got at the moment is a, um, a party that's just sort of escalated with numbers. We've had a couple of outside groups turn up, mm -hmm. so what we're looking to try and do now is to put an end to it. Yep. The group that's left up there is by and large OK, but you know, numbers-wise it's sort of double what we anticipated. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, without too much drama, if yeah. you can assist us to get you know, the numbers down, that would be great. OK. Homeowners given us authority to uh, close the party. The um, majority of people there at the moment are uh, OK. The gate crashes uh, and large have left. Homeowner's going to go in and uh, keep those present that he wants, and we're going to go in and assist um, getting rid of the rest. We'll advance the march. Move. F eight. Team policing leader Sergeant Mike McElrath has had enough bottles thrown at him in these situations to know that anything could happen at no the worries. top of the drive. Help with the rest. Where are we going? Good night. Parent help. But this time, the party begins to break up quickly. Having moved everybody onto the street, police now have the problem of dispersing them out of the neighbourhood. Block right, block right. The crowd moves reluctantly into the night, but police stay with them until they disperse into smaller groups. Can you come in behind us with the truck with the red and blues going so we don't get run over from the back, please? With one situation under control, the unit's called to a party that's gone wrong in Papatoi Toi. A uh, unit went to a job of some sort and uh, got attacked, I think. And, um, He's called for backup. There's another unit off there at the moment. Well. And, uh, I might oh, yeah, copy. There's a couple of... No, nothing. 
When police move in, the people at the house respond angrily. The small team of police pulls back to let the situation die down before trying again. And this time, people begin to leave. Is the taxi coming? Yes, or while we bring it. Keep moving forward! Get up! Although for some, just standing up is a problem. Don't go back in the house! Get out of the road! Get out! Take him with you! Go! As the three stagger off into the distance, the team policing unit clears the surrounding streets of the other party goers. But just when it seems that everybody's disappeared, police find Craig, the young drunk guy, face down in the mud. Craig was taken back to where he's stationed for detox before being returned home. And for their troubles, the police got to hose out the back of the truck. And parents, this is the state of your children. What a shocker. Next week on Police 107, Alex Grant and Sonia Webb deal with gang members, drunks, and an arrest that threatens to get out of hand. Watch your bags. Watch your bags. And a girl who can hardly stand decides to drive her friends home. What about you? You can't even stand up straight, man. Well, she can't drive, he can't drive, and I'm the only one that cannot even see him.